everybody and welcome back to Chat and Chill. Today it's just me and Emma. Yeah, no guess too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so normally we'll have two topics and an interview. Today we'll just have three topics, no interview. Straight into it. Let's start with, um, oh crap, what was it? NHS. NHS, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Sounds of cool. Now, um, if you haven't heard already, there has been a lot of... Um, well, there's been a rise in how long you wait if you're a cancer patient, if you need to be having A and E, or if you're in an A and E, should I say, and if you need to have an operation. Um, between England, Wales, and Northern Ireland for the past eighteen months, nobody's been able to hit the actual targets that they're set out to do. Uh, whether you think targets is an issue or not, um, Scotland, however, is the only country within twelve months at least that actually hit their targets. Uh, basically, meaning if you're an A and E and they say they're going to see twenty people in A and E, they ain't even reach that target. That's basically what I mean by target. Uh, so, meaning you could be waiting for hours and hours and hours. Now, obviously, Emma, somebody who is an NHS patient, um, do you watch the other episodes? Don't know. I'll put the link somewhere. But anyways, the, um, someone who is an NHS patient um, quite frequently, uh, so the brother as well. What is it for, for you? Like, how do you see like, the whole waiting system? I've actually gone private because... Oh, yeah. rich! Okay! <laughs> no, because when I, I was going to the doctors for yeah. my issues, which yeah. is in the other video, and um, being ignored. Yeah. So I had to go that. private and yeah. I would have been waiting so long to see someone yeah. so that I, ha I you know, had no alternative. I'm lucky that I have that choice, a lot of people yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the problem is, is that not enough money is put into the NHS, so there's not yeah. enough staff. The nurses yeah, yeah. are stretched and they're working long shifts, yeah. not getting breaks. I have friends who are nurses and midwives, etc. So like, yeah. you hear them, I'll see you on Facebook about their long shifts and how they haven't mm. had a break, how they're tired. And like there's been documentaries as well, obviously. Yeah. But um, like my mom's, my um, my friend's mum, she's just gone for her thyroid actually, interesting oh, really? enough, and she's got to have an operation. Yeah. She's got to wait ugh, months, till next middle of next year. What? Yeah, to be seen, to have surgery. It's almost like a court, isn't it? Yeah, it's a long time. It's a long, long time. And I, th I think that's why. And the, the problem is, though, is that a lot of people go to A and E for stuff that might not be an emergency yeah. and then take up that waiting time. That's yeah. why they created, is it 111? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of people obviously don't use it. So, so it's true. How, do you, how do you determine if something is serious or not? Cool? Like you said, a lot of people do go to A and E and mm -hmm. might not actually need A and E. Now, my sister, who's I've got food poison. My mum took it A and E, but in my head I was thinking, oh yeah, she needs to go A and E. But my mum being my mum was like, yeah. nah, man, it's got A and E. And she sat there for like ten hours <laughs> with like a bucket. And I'm just like, but she didn't even need to go A and E. Yeah. Um, they were just gonna give her some tablets and send her back home anyway. So it wasn't even that serious. But obviously, when is it serious? Though? Like, what's when do you class something as serious? I think if you've broken anything, obviously. Obviously, yeah. yeah. Or you think you might have fractured something or had a fall, especially if you're elderly. But I think when it comes to like feeling ill, I, a flu and like a bit like me the other day, I was really, really poorly. And I, I felt like I would, I'd want to have someone look after me. But the simple fact is, I know my own body, and I think that's when people, you, that's what you have to do. You have to switch on to know your own body. So mm. Flu symptoms and things like that, you can just go to the doctor and get antibiotics. But the simple way of doing it is literally being at home. Ibuprofen or paracetamol or like all your beach and stuff yeah. and or natural like some people say natural remedies and things like that. But why do you, why do you think people prefer an A and E to a walking clinic? Yeah. A walking clinic. But people just don't seem to want to use that. Oh, do you know what? I, I really I don't think it's advertised enough. Like I wouldn't know where to go to a walking clinic. The only one that I know is in Croydon by the flyover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've been in there. And it's hit or miss, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I either get seen like really quickly yeah. or I've waited hours. Or the people on reception ask you questions about your symptoms and if you say a certain answer, they're like, no, 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 you can't come here for that. You've yeah. got to go somewhere. So I'm like, oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is handy because there's a pharmacy already there. So if yeah. you have something, you can get it. Mm. So it, it makes sense. Yeah. I just don't think it's advertised enough. Yeah, because you know, when I broke my leg, <laughs> Three times I've never broken anything. Just for <laughs> putting the record out there. But when I broke my leg the third time, it was actually Croydon. I went to Croydon Hospital. I sat there for at least, before I was seen, a good 12 hours. Shut up. No, like, like I, was, I had a bed. They gave me a 
bed, cool. Yeah. Because obviously I came from the ambulance, didn't I? Before pitch. Sat there like this, like just chilling, my legs looking all wonky and whatnot. Oh. I'm just chilling there waiting for something for a good 12 hours. Lucky at the time, um, I, was, I, I was with my girlfriend, <laughs> Sophie, funny enough, and like she just chilled with me. So like, I was cool, I wasn't thinking too much of what I was waiting for. I sent her to the shop, get me food, and I, 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 was, I was living a good life with her. <laughs> but like, 12 hours, you know, to find out if it's broken or not. Like at, at that point, I thought it was a fraction. Yeah. Um, but that's because I was just hoping it wasn't broken because when you break a leg, the same joint so many times, you just hoping it's like, please say I've broken it again, you know what I mean? Um, the other thing is you don't want to moan because you feel like, you know, it's not the nurse's fault, it's not the doctor's fault, they're well, under strain, but at the same time, yeah. there's also, you're not like, I'm not paying for it. So, yeah. whereas when I lived in America, I got sick. Oh, you lived in America? Yeah, for a year. We're not <laughs> Okay. And while I was there, I had gallbladder problems. Okay. Now, obviously, you take out insurance, yeah. but when you get the bill, yeah. you see how expensive everything is. Like one scam is nearly four thousand dollars. Oh yeah. So you think of what you get here, and I know with chiropractic and everything goes into it. But I just think that enough money is not pushed into it. And it just might not even be free for much longer. Really, the rest. No, but they come up with this excuse: "Oh, there's no money for it. We haven't got enough." Um, what? I think fun, you made fibbing. Funny enough, there was a doctor that came out. Um, I was reading that article on BBC and he was saying that there is not enough doctors to see the patients quickly mm -hmm. enough. Um, do you think they need to do something about maybe uh, finding people that are more interested in being a doctor? What, what it sounds like is there's not enough doctors. Clearly there's not enough people that want to go into that room. Probably not enough doctors because they know that the long hours, the strain, that I don't know what the pain is. What is one of the highest just... suicide, well, suicide and drop? Dead should be a number one doctor. Really? Number two. Yeah. So he's probably think... stressed, he's probably not high enough pay, I don't know what they get paid. Well, they get paid good. But it probably yeah. takes over your whole life. Well, yeah. The hours. You're, you're, and, you're yeah. cool, aren't you? Yeah. If you're at home, then something. And there's probably not enough just... support. They probably think, as a doctor, they know the answer to most things related in that area. They probably don't, might not get well, any support when it comes to like mental health or having time off or, you yeah. know, if there's, if there's only, say, there needs to be five doctors and there's three off. Yeah. And you, you're genuinely sick, or you've got mental health problems. You feel well. You're fine with the time NHS um, for minutes. No. What? You have two minutes. What was it? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the problem, the problem, the problem with doctors as well is the ones on NHS aren't as qualified as the private ones. The private ones have an extra education. It's usually because they specialise in something. Yeah. Yeah. And do you then think that the NHS doctors need to get more education or even GP doctors? I'd be going to the GPs and blah, blah, blah. I'll get a different answer there. And then as soon as you go private, I'll get a different answer there. And usually the private ones tend to be correct and the GP ones then tend to be incorrect. But that's because when you go private, you're not rushed. Whereas when you go to an NHS hospital, a bit like when you sit in the waiting room right. and you go and you see the doctor, they've got, like you said, they've got hit targets yeah. and they've got to be a certain speed. Like they want to get this person out and the next person in. Yeah. So they might not take a full interest in what you're saying mm. in the sense of they might not listen to everything you're saying, a bit like we were talking about stories earlier, about yeah. my mum, yeah. you know, she was really, really sick. She had all the symptoms of saying, even that my dad had looked up and she's gone and seen a doctor because you trust those people at the hospital yeah. and they fucked her off and sent her away. We've gone private and she's had life-saving surgery because she could have died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, how could you miss that? It was right in front of you, but yeah. it's the stress and strain and maybe you're right. Maybe they're not. I think he might have been like a newly qualified doctor. So he yeah. hasn't maybe got the experience yeah, cool. of, on that like, subject. Yeah. You know, a lot of doctors are also um, from uni. If you go to dentists, yeah. And you're and you're getting an NHS like feeling and stuff like that. They're students mm -hmm. taking out your teeth and practicing yeah. on you. Uh, one of my friends was actually a dentist and like because I used to work, I used to work at dental practice. Oh, okay. um, in Everton and Castle. Um, <laughs> that's a dentist. That's the last question. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I was starting to be a dental hygienist, so I had to do like a year as a nurse in yeah. So I was working there, talking to this one dentist, fresh, no experience. He's got his own, he works at the hospital and then comes here to me. I'm looking at him like, right, you don't even like good. You know? like, no, remember, you don't look that good, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he's just like, yeah, like, this is what they do 
curious they just send you in the hospital you do a cup of tea to the I was like yeah you do it for yourself I would not want to shoot touching my teeth I'm like yeah I need to go find another but um, I think the problem is that uh, I don't know if it's just the NHS but they're trying to find ways to I think spend less on doctors because they're very expensive and if you have all of these, if all of these students are all of a sudden allowed to just be in hospitals and do all these treatments when they don't have like at least five Yeah, but they're experience. expensive because they're qualified and they need to save people's lives. But then a lot of the qualified will tend to have a private practice. Hmm. Like who's, who's actually going to want to work at NHS? The NHS has so much issues. That's what I'm saying, so they need support and they need something but they need that would make uh, someone want to work. Yeah, there. exactly. And I don't think anyone wants to and I think that's the problem. I wouldn't want to work there. No, I would just fly to you? South Africa and do my own thing. That's fair. That's what they all do. All of them they, they do they either go to like Africa or India, these type of areas and I set up their own thing there to also support the people that need it. Or they go private. I think the simple fact is if you've got an issue with something in particular a bit like me, thyroid or endometriosis, you go private. You, I know it's expensive, but you, and if you have the money, you pay for that care and you well, pay for that how attention. How expensive is expensive? Like roughly, don't tell me how much you're paying it, but like give us like an estimate. Or... Well, like an average appointment, I could be in there three or four minutes, or maybe longer. It depends if I'm having an examination, and it can cost one hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, nobody does all benefits. Is no, exactly. But now <laughs> what they do is they do credit cards and things like that, and loans for you to do that. Yeah, I know, but yeah, it's, it's 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 that it's that thing of. You've got a lump. You you think it might be something cancerous? NHS don't really do anything, or you've got to wait like a year and a half, or you pay one hundred and fifty pound that could save your life. Like it's a. Yeah, but if you're on benefit, you're, you're making at least six hundred minimum. No, I know, but like one hundred and fifty pound in house bills and food and if you're oh, kids, nice. you're pretty yeah, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Um, and that's just an appointment. Oh, I imagine after that. It's just that. an appointment. You don't even want how much it costs my surgery. Oh my lord. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's go into our break, um, caps on news, and then um, we will come back with you with another topic. Hope you enjoy it. That's what I'm going to call this episode 10. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed the topics today, as there was no guest, but a special appearance making this debut. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I thought, you know, when I do the news, why not look like a reporter? There's some glasses now. He's in NHS. We're going with the NHS today. So if more than 40,000 people a year in England are getting fines of £100 from an automated system that dentists say is hitting the most vulnerable. Now, what it's basically is saying is, you know, if you're like, you know, more poor and certain issues and money's not always there for you, you're just getting hit with random automated uh, fines of a hundred pounds more which is pretty crazy um me personally used to work at dental practice as a dental nurse i know what you're thinking why i was a dental nurse but forget that that was the thing i was doing then and we the system do like just yeah i'm not gonna deny it just just send fines here 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 and there for the smallest of things there was a there was a statement saying that um people with dementia or learning difficulties are fined for just taking the wrong box by accident you know what I mean things like that so and it's just all promising there are going to be changes made to the system so hopefully we get that done and dizzled very soon now let's get into the next conversation is also doing the NHS show and it just waits for patients who have either kidneys either cancer care any or operations has worsened across the UK meaning obviously if you have if you need to be seen at a ASAP basically with cancer treatment or you know go to a and &E or operations your waiting period is yeah it's pretty a very long period of time uh, people do say best bet is to go private but if you can't afford it obviously you're going to be with the NHS um, again that's another issue I think we have in the UK um, we had a doctor coming out saying that maybe there's not enough doctors to be seeing these patients quickly enough. So maybe then we should possibly be looking at giving more people the opportunities to get into um, uh, the NHS scene or the doctor uh, career path. Um, it's not as pop I don't think being a doctor is even as popular as it used to be. 
Like, there's not a lot of people that I know that goes into medicine right now. Um, and it's also, it was also stated that England, Wales and Northern Ireland have not hit their targets for 18 months. Um, now, is targets important in this discussion? I'll leave that guys with you. And for me, mm, yeah, if you're not hitting your targets then, yeah, it's not really looking too good. Scotland being able to say they've hit the top within 12 months, which is really good. So a big shout out to Scotland and I hope you guys are doing well. Now let's go into another story with Ed Sheeran. Now Ed Sheeran had to cancel his Asia tour. If you don't know what's happened to him, he basically had a, a bicycle accident where he fractured both of his left and his right arm. There was a tweet that came out today where he said it's fine and hopefully things will get better for him. And you know, he wants to reschedule his Asian talk. So look forward to seeing you again, Ed Sheeran. And you know, when you're cycling on the street, guys, be careful. Um, especially in London, you know, roads are very narrow and easy, easily. But you know, the, the, the improving number, you know, the whole cycling lane and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, let's go to the next story. Now, UK unemployment has fallen by 52,000 in three months um, from August to 1.4 million. Uh, leaving jobless rate unchanged at 4.3% from the previous quarter, still at the lowest level since 1975. Now, if you remember, I did report on this story about three months ago, we were talking like July ish, I think, maybe August, I don't know what episode it was, but I did talk about this briefly, and basically, there's been no change. Um, we have 32.1 million in work during that three month period as well, so it's still pretty much very, very similar. Basically, People that work jobless are still pretty much jobless with an added 52,000 more. So it's not really looking very good, is it? Um, if you are jobless, you know, you've got places like Job Centre, various places that help you search for jobs. Um, me personally, from searching for jobs, I find it very annoying. I don't know how you guys think, but when you're searching for a job, especially in the UK, I can only base it around living in London, really. Um, it takes very long. And the responses are very long, and um, I don't know how these companies do. Like a lot of these companies, that even when you do find it, it's very word of mouthy, and like you can just if you know someone, you'll probably get a job a lot quicker than applying. This is a fact. Anyway, let's go into our next story. Amazon studio head Roy Prince resigns after being accused of ignoring Rose um, McGowan's rape claim and t telling a lesbian producer, "You will love my." D. Um, again, this is, this is it's basically going back to Harvey Weinstein. Now, basically, Rose told uh, Roy about the situation with Harvey Weinstein and he completely ignored it. Now, Roy Price, yeah, I say, Roy Price is actually a friend of Harvey Weinstein, so let's speculate around that. Um, now, the whole thing of telling a lesbian that you're going to like my D, totally totally unacceptable behavior in a work environment i don't understand what people are doing these days and it's just so wrong but hope you enjoyed the news it was a very serious news day today i hope you got a bit informed there and we will see you back again what well, everybody and welcome back to just the two of us on <laughs> anyways um let's go to another topic it's to do with Brexit, basically and apparently if we can't get a deal done with the EU, is that correct, Coxie? With the EU? With the EU, um, the Home Office are talking about um, bringing in um, the army to stand at the border to basically stop anyone from illegally entering the country. Is that correct, Coxie? Yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah. I'm coming back to tell you about this story. But anyways, um, talking of immigration then, um, if you guys didn't know, Emma clearly has a lot more talent than a lot of us today. Um, she actually worked in immigration as well. So I guess I have to start with you. What is your views on immigration in this country um, in regards to people outside the EU? Um, clearly we're not EU now. Yeah. Um, and in regards to us, and you know, how, what's like your views on the whole immigration situation? Because it's going to change a lot, obviously. Yeah, oh gosh, where do I start? <laughs> so I think like immigration has gone. It's it, there's no control over it really. To be honest, well, yeah. um, when I worked there, it's quite shocking to see how many people have been forgotten about that have entered the country. Okay. And I think there was just there was no system in place. It's a bit like America. So and when you say forgotten about, can you just explain? Forgotten? So what I mean is like so when you go to America, yeah. you have a visa or whatever else, and you you're logged 
if you go and leave that country, they go and get you, a bit like the bond system. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. they will go and get you mm. and track you. I'm not saying they do it for every single person, but it's a lot more control. That's basically what they do, yeah. Whereas over here, you're an overstayer and you can hide out. You get, so you might not get benefits and stuff like that, but obviously then you go work legally, and it's a lot easier, it's not as strict here. I mean, obviously you have enforcement, like they go out and they will find people, mm. but it's so far down the line that most of them sometimes have already gone missing, like you can't find them, and they've got, you know, a house. But when you first come, well, when I worked there a few years ago, I don't know if it's different now, so I need to be careful, but like when you used to come over, you'd go to Croydon, the office, and you'd obviously check in and like sign in, You'd get a card and you'd get money on it. Is that the council spot? The one? I don't know. No, it's um, I don't, I don't know about there's like, there's an immigration building just on the Croydon where you have, where, oh, where yeah, which is why it was so why it's so not being it's so diverse in Croydon right, yeah, yeah. because it's where the home office is. So you would go and sign on and you get your card, you get money on it, and then obviously they would talk about your situation and if you really need to stay. And obviously, then find like a hostel, whatever you, hotel for you to stay in, yeah. and then eventually you'd apply and get housing, etc. Mm. And that card they would hold on to, and they would have to sign in into Electric House, which is on the main road, and oh, they yeah. would have to come and sign in physically to get their money, mm. which was good because you could check that like, they're still here. And if yeah. they are an overstand, they're wanted, they come and check in. Yeah. I'd see, and I'd be like, right, okay, and they'd go and get them. A, and deport them. But that's very rare. So you're not talking about deport, um, deportation, is that what? Deportation, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, you hear a lot of stories about police always coming booting down your door and mm -hmm. kicking them out. I mean, why do they, why can't they just like, I don't know, knock on the door? What's been, why do you need police for this? I don't get it. I mean, I understand people might not want to leave. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, if they're like trying to stay and forcing it, I get that, but the whole booting the door at like three a.m. Yeah, the reason that what's, is what's so that? the purpose of it is is that when yeah yeah but when you work for the arrest team, what happens is you go in early morning with the police because the simple fact is is they're more likely to be home. Yeah, fair. And if they're going to do a runner, and some of these people are really violent, like they do have guns, they ex you know exploit young children and they're yeah. committing crimes. Yeah. So usually if you're going obviously to go and get someone you will have a profile on them so if they're a high risk usually if they're a high risk the police are with you i've done that oh, and it and it, and it's scary because you're in blocks of flattering you know you don't know where you're going or who what you're walking into you've got to be prepared for anything and that is the reason why they're so harsh and also mm. like they're working illegally they're not paying taxes yeah you say they're working illegally what sort of a lot of their work is pants money anyway so they're not really earning it well, if they're working I'm in, you, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, of course they will. They'll make money. Unless it's drugs. Yeah, unless it's drugs, obviously. Yeah, but if they're working and they're working full time in, say, I don't know, for instance, a kebab shop, uh, yeah. the back of like cleaning plates in a restaurant or yeah. anything, yeah. they're still earning money. Illegally, though. Illegally. Right. You know, that's crazy you say that because I don't want to bail out. I don't want to bail out any of my friends. Sorry, guys, <laughs> but I know people that have like corner shops and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and it's very like family run mm -hmm. um, but that is to have like some uncle or whatever come overseas yeah. look after the shop no visa but he's working there he can sleep upstairs in the shop wherever they, they set up the bedroom and stuff like that and that's very popular especially within the Bangladeshi what really the any corner shop yeah. company, really is very popular in that sense um what what I'm trying to understand is mm -hmm. why do they struggle like the visa situation in this country isn't that that hard to get a visa. Or well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I've never had to get a visa in this country, but I can imagine with everything else going on, it's probably not as simple. Well, as not right now because of Brexit. Yeah, yeah. But I think just in general, it probably it's probably a very long process. Yeah. You have if you're usually if you're applying for a visa to stay in this country, you have to go for an interview. Okay. So and they will interview you, which is something else I've done. So I've got to work everywhere. So you interview someone to find out why they're here, if their life is in danger, you have to tell if they're telling the truth or if they're lying. How would you know to tell the truth if they're lying? There's little things. There's little things that you can tell, like when oh. they come in and they say they've got no money, oh, I haven't got anywhere to live. How have you just rolled up in a brand new pair of jeans and night trainers and everything and you're looking okay? It's 
So where are you staying? Oh, I'm staying in a hostel. So who's paying for that hostel? Where's your money coming from? Oh, my friend gave it to me. And it all starts to unravel. And then you find out that their friend is funding them to be here. And there's little things. It's all yeah. That, yeah. How do you look, bro? Like, I've always got this question because <laughs> I just broke. And so I'm like, like, listen, if I want to look good, I can look good. But I'll say that, I just tell you, bro. You're going like, to struggle to, what's you're going like, to struggle to, like, Cause it's a clean image, aren't you? If really? I'm thinking about like what you just said, basically, I just rolled in how I dress when I got home. I'm basically getting away because I don't wear. But I don't. No, because you have to have a backstory of where you're coming from, why you're but being that's threatened, not and all that. that no, it's probably not. But it depends where you come from. Like obviously, there's war, war torn areas. So if you're saying that you know my life is threatened and all of yeah, this, anyone. yeah, I know. But it just depends, like. There's lots of things that go into it. Who's going to look after you here? How are you going to fund yourself? How are you going to find a job? Isn't that why they come to the office? Though? Yeah, but they have to. So they practically don't. So I'm not really. No, 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 no,
nowadays is to do drugs. It's just it's just quicker. You sell weed, you sell um um <laughs> a drugs, a the same word. But <laughs> you sell hard drugs yeah. and like you can make a quick one thousand pound and that's what people do. People come to this country and literally just sell drugs. It, it's just a fact. If you look at any like Croydon especially like I was telling you, highest crime rate but it's not got the highest amount of poor people because people are on drugs selling drugs and it's like you don't need you're not broke right? and also there are like companies and places that will take on people who are illegal because it's cheaper to pay them very cheap yeah exactly. but that's why so it's a vicious circle yeah um but on that note let's go into our break that was intense um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> show some love to Emma though, because I grew no hard in it. I know. But it's just. <laughs>